Hi, I'm Mike Renning, the Chief Technology Officer of Quantropy, and I'm here to talk to you today about preserving truth and trust through true quantum secure cryptography. So Quantropy was founded to combat the historic levels of cybercrime present in the world today that threaten the very underpinnings of our modern digital economies, along with the looming threat of quantum computer based attacks. So our founders, Dr. Randy Kwong, who has a number of papers at the IEEE conference this week, and James Nguyen created Quantropy specifically to prefer, preserve truth and trust now and forever. Now, a lot of talk has been out there in the press and in the industry about the rising quantum threat, in particular because of the great work of some of the world's biggest technology firms to bring quantum gate computers to life to solve many you know, business and scientific challenges. But unfortunately, there are algorithms such as Shores and Grover's that make it possible to use those very same computers to attack the underpinnings of today, crypt, today's cryptographic standards, including both asymmetric encryption through RSA, as well as symmetric encryption such as AES. Additionally, new research suggests other forms of prevalent quantum computing such as quantum annealers from Canadian company D-Wave can also be used in a potential attack against some of the candidates from NIST for post-quantum cryptography. So to ward off that threat while still being applicable today, we think that any complete or true cybersecurity system has to have three fundamental cryptographic capabilities. First, you have to establish trust using asymmetric encryption so that any two parties can trust each other via shared information or shared secrets. Second, uncertainty. You've got to push all the uncertainty to the attacker so that those parties can protect their data now and forever. And last, entropy, strong cryptographic keys, truly random, unguessable, uncalculable over a very large set so that brute force is impossible to achieve. So we're gonna spend a little time talking about each of these areas, each of these building blocks and going into a little depth on Quantropy's quantum secure solutions. So first, asymmetric encryption. Now, in the industry and literature today, there are really two predominant approaches to asymmetric encryption in the post-quantum world. The first is an infrastructure play with quantum key distribution using photonic entanglement. Challenges new science, new tech, still in development, still really much a lab or experimental process. In fact, right now, NSA does not currently recommend its deployment for real world use scenarios. Alternatively, there's an algorithmic approach. You know, and this is the focus of NIST with post-quantum cryptography where we place classic public key algorithms with new post-quantum key algorithms. But again, challenges like we just mentioned, where the Mueller's may be used to actually attack these new methods. But let's go a little deeper, right? NIST started the process in 2015 when they did a call for papers and a call for candidates. And through several rounds, including round three that wrapped up in 2020, they're down to four finalists with the expectation that the a final candidate will be announced later in 2021. But as we look closer, Three of these four finalists are lattice-based approaches, and then classic McLeese is code-based. And in contrast to those, Quantropy is actually proposing our mask approach, which is actually a system of multivariate equations and has the strong attribute of quantum security complexity of OP squared, very substantial improvement in overall system security. So let's take a closer look a Quantropy mask. So first and foremost, any asymmetric, asymmetric encryption solution has to solve these, these um, differentiators and key attributes. First, um, that it sufficiently decouples the relationship between the public and private keys so you can never determine one from the other. Second, whatever you encrypt with it for the public key can never be extracted and third, and this one's a challenge, is to make sure that it's gonna work in today's low powered or constrained devices. 
the internet of things, because we all know that is that there are billions, if not tens of billions of internet connected devices that need robust security, even beyond what we see in mobile phones, PCs and other computer systems. And so the key differentiators of Quantropy are, as I mentioned already, the quantum security of OP squared, of very small key sizes and key signature, and as well, the fact that we can run so efficiently that we can run on low powered or constrained devices. So let me tell you more about how we create this system. So there's a lot of math, but the great news is because we have some fundamental mathematical approaches in the multivariate space, we can explain it at the level that even a high schooler can understand. So we start with a, a low degree polynomial pair and the coefficients of this are gonna be part of the private key. We then match that with a multivariate polynomial that has a sufficient order size, generally fourth or fifth, but such that n plus two is greater than five, because then math theorems tell us it is unfactorable uh, without all the coefficients. We take that system of equations and multiply it out to create a product of polynomials. And it's the coefficient of, coefficients of these products that is actually gonna be the basis of our public key. But very importantly, we still put in our back pocket, we still hide the lowest order terms and the highest order terms in order to prevent factoring and Gaussian elimination from any cryptographic attack. We then pick two private random noise variables, which we use to construct a noise function, which we'll make public again to enable um, our partner to encrypt its secret. And last but not least, we do it over a very large prime number field in order to give ourselves sufficient computational space to make it again uncrackable, regardless of the quantum compute power brought to bear. So we now see, as I mentioned, there's a public key consisting of an array of coefficients, again, withholding the lowest and the highest order coefficients and the two noise variable functions, the prime field P. Those are all published, put on the internet, like any public key, private key, secret coefficients that are held back along with those noise constants. So how do we put Alice's public key to work? So we get our friend Bob and Bob's got a secret that he wants to share with Alice. He takes that secret X and he picks two random numbers that only he knows, truly random numbers, Y and Z. Now he takes X, Y, and Z and over that prime field and the publicly published coefficients and noise functions calculates just four numbers, P prime, Q prime, N zero, N, N. And he sends those four computed numbers back to Alice. Now, how does Alice extract Bob's secret from those? First, she needs to reconstruct her product of polynomials. So she starts with the first two numbers, P prime and Q prime that Bob sent her. And then combining his noise numbers plus her secret variables, she's able to reconstruct the highest order term and the lowest order term. And from that, she's got her system reconstructed, but thanks to the power of math, cancels out Bob's secret noise variables, which were there to protect from attacker, but because she can reconstruct the system of polynomials, she can wipe them out doesn't need to know them. And as a result, ends up with a very simple system of equations that again, very solvable with high school math. And from that, she can extract Bob's secret. Now, when we think about taking the system, which I just presented in a pretty high level, and if you wanna go into greater details, again, please check the paper from Quantropy that's part of the IEEE proceedings for this conference. But we recommend, again, that base polynomial be fourth order, the univariate numbers, our second order. And while we only demonstrated for simplicity of PowerPoint, two noise variables, we actually suggest four because you have four equations and that way you end up with an underdetermined system, which again is unsolvable by the attacker. And now when we do that, because of the strong security, we can compare our solution to the NIST security levels one, three, and five over a field size of either 32, 48, or only 64 bits a much smaller field size in bits because of a classic security of OP to the fourth or quantum security OP squared, smaller field size, bigger security level. 
And when we translate that into key sizes and compare that to the NIST PQC candidates, you see a very dramatic improvement in key size, which is gonna go for storage, for processing, for blockchain, for internet of things, really dramatic uh, differential between our solution and some of the candidates from this, some of which are, are basically functionally Ill, in, unusable in IoT applications. Now, switching gears, let's talk about uncertainty and let's talk about uh, really symmetric encryption. And again, how we do it in a quantum secure manner. So classic computers, we all know are based on Boolean algebra and they do bitwise operations. Quantum computers are actually based on linear algebra, basically representing vectors or states of all the quantum gates, matrix operations. Bitwise operations becomes matrix operations. Single dimension becomes two dimensional. Computing power goes from two to the N to two to the N squared. And so at Quantropy, we're able to express quantum states of physical gates through the linear algebra matrix representation and ultimately create permutation groups. And it's the power of these groups to create entropy and expand entropy that give us the power of our symmetric encryption solution. Let me go a little deeper. So again, straight up comparison of entropy and, and key space. If you take a simple uh, Boolean algebra array, a Boolean key space of two to the eighth, eight bits, two to the eighth is 256. So if that was a combination lock, I only got to try 256 times to brute force open that lock. Take those same eight bits, represent them as a permutation key space, and we get two to the eighth factorial matrices or 10 to the 507th. And so the random, uh, sorry, the Shannon entropy goes from eight bits to 1684, a monster increase in the, in the actual true entropy. And as a result, again, guess 256 numbers, guess 10 to the 507th. Dramatic improvement, same eight bits. And so we now take those, those permutation matrices, represent them in algebra and therefore algorithmically, because it's linear algebra and it's elegant to compute and decode, it results in software libraries that are very small footprint, as small as 2.5 K bytes, that then when we run it head to head with AES-256, as much as 18 times faster than AES-256 with only 10% of the power utilization. And as you can see from the histograms, nearly perfect encoding or randomization of the plain text resulting in ciphertext that is undecipherable, unfactorable, and basically impervious to anything but a brute force attack against a space that's practically infinite, giving us what we really want is that true uncertainty. And then last but not least, let's talk about entropy. Let's talk about strong random numbers. So true random numbers come from, from, from some physical source. Of course, starts with everything from uh, any kind of a mechanical process to webcams and lava lamps. And we've seen in the last few years an upgrade to quantum random number generators that use different quantum physical processes, quantum tunneling or other things to actually generate a stream of nearly pure entropy. And in fact, Quantropy partners with Quintessence Labs for their PC board that generates strong quantum random numbers from physical processes. But as always, having a physical quantum device in every laptop, every mobile phone, every IoT device isn't yet practical. And so historically, folks have turned to pseudo random numbers where they can use an algorithmic approach, start with seed entropy, and then algorithmically expand it out. Challenges, as we all know from different operating systems, that there is a weakness to pseudo random numbers because ultimately they have what's called short periodicity, where they repeat after a certain period of time. They may have not, they may have some biases, lack of uniformity. You can have entropy exhaustion, all different reasons why, generally, for high security applications, they're not recommended. But now, Quantropy is really excited to produce a paper that's again shared at this IEEE conference around pseudo random quantum number generators, where we are actually able to, again, applying our, our QPP algorithm 
in order to expand the entropy and approach an entropy state similar, if not nearly identical uh, and sufficiently identical to true quantum random numbers from a physical source. And so when we start to compare it, uh, a lot of facts here, but what's most important is that uh, by being deterministic, a quantum or, or pseudo random number or quantum pseudo quantum random number generator can be reused and can be used as part of a pre shared secret scheme. This is what you know QKD and other physical processes look to emulate, but also giant differentiator when it's pseudo quantum random numbers, we effectively have the same forward secrecy as physically generated numbers, a giant limitation of just plain classic pseudo random. So how do we quantify do it? Well, if we had a quantum gate computer, we could do it directly on the physical machine. But given those are still in development, we do it mathematically with that keep algorithm. And from there, we can generate those same 1684 uh, Shannon entropy. And in our case, our implementation, we implemented 64 8-bit permutation matrices. Net result is 10 to the fifth entropy of the algorithm. When you compare that to a typical 64-bit operating system, random number generator, where it's only less than 10 to the second uh, bits of entropy, suddenly you've got a problem with the classic approach. As you can see here, a current existing classic supercomputer can crack a 64-bit pseudo-random number in only 37 seconds. And if we had the equivalent size quantum computer available today, it would crack it in 0.1 microseconds. Clearly not sufficient. However, implemented with Quantropy Secure PQRNG solution, that giant increase in, uh, in entropy by between 100 and 1,000 times means that that classic supercomputer would need 10 to the 500 years to reproduce the, the random number strain. And even a quantum computer of the same size, 10 to the 239 years. So clearly a robust enough entropy space to provide sufficient randomness to be impervious to any brute force attack, even quantum based. So big question always is great. We can make these wonderful, robust quantum random numbers. What are some of the use cases? Because people always want to know, how could I use it once I've got it, right? Over and above what we think about. And so one of them, the first grand challenge is making sure you can get it where you need it. And that's one of the great challenges when people go for an infrastructure solution around QKD, because again, physical distance limitations, bandwidth limitations, generation limitations, uh, it's kind of fraught. We're here at Quantropy because we're doing it through linear algebra expressed as digital algorithms that can run on today's IP networks and classic computers. We ran a, a demonstration in partnership with Canary, the research network here in Canada, where we're able to demonstrate really to stream strong random numbers from our source in Ottawa to locations like Edmonton, 3,400 kilometers away at almost over 100 megabits effective streaming rates, all the way up through New York, San Francisco, Frankfurt, London, to Singapore, almost 15,000 kilometers away, we were able to stream at uh, almost 14 megabits per second. And as a fun way to think about it, if you think about Google, you know, the number one uh, website on the planet that handles about 64,000 sessions, which could have 64,000 session keys per second, we'd be able to handle in Edmonton the equivalent of six Googles of traffic uh, with those keys, or Singapore, almost a full Google of consumption. So clearly very robust capability. And unfortunately, when you compare that to the state of the market with QKD, state of the science, they can barely hit 0.6 Googles at a distance of only 20 kilometers. So 15,000 kilometers, 20, oh, almost a full Google, a little over half a Google, you can see the power of the Quantropy Secure platform in distributing strong random anywhere on the planet over any IP network. So another use case is to say, you know what, for st standards reasons or legacy reasons, for now and following this guidelines, I'm gonna stay with AES 256 for the near term. Well, sometimes you can run into the challenge that what's called entropy exhaustion, where an AES key, the guideline is generally use it to encrypt about a terabyte of data, and then you need to roll the key. Well, if you're in a high throughput network environment, 
you may have to roll the keys pretty frequently. And that's a challenge both operationally and security wise. So instead, you can actually inject a random initialization vector or IV. And as long as that's a random number, you can actually then and randomly encrypt each packet that is sent out and as a result, extend the life of the AES uh, 256 key. And this is a solution which we see being very uh, applicable in core networks, as well as in wireless transmissions for 5G and backhaul, where because between the mobile device and the base station, you're looking at about a terabit, sorry, a gigabit, got my units right, gigabit per second communications, meaning needs about 32 megabits per second of random numbers. And then between the base station and the core network, again, about a terabyte or bit, oops, terabit backhaul, again, needing about 32 gigabits per second of IV only through pseudo quantum random number generation with sufficient entropy, could you ever meet those volumes of need while maintaining that quantum secure attribute? Another use case is bring your own key. Most of the major cloud and SaaS platforms of today allow the enterprise to bring their own strong random key to the party so that you can control access to your data, the encryption, decryption, and you've got complete and utter control. And so if you're gonna bring a key, bring a strong key, and then instantly upgrade your posture today, immediately against future attacks, both classic and quantum. A big focus in the marketplace is the thought of saying that as we start to have more um, low earth orbit satellites, both for government and military use, but also for commercial use, there's a strong demand to be able to use them to distribute strong entropy to various and sundry points on the planet that aren't necessarily easily served by today's terrestrial networks. Everything from airplanes in flight to remote, remote oil fields to ships at sea, you name it. And again, with a digital solution like Quantropy Secure, we can distribute sufficient entropy for any use case over those existing satellite networks, let alone potentially encrypting the traffic to and from the satellites themselves. So bringing it all together, any complete or true cryptographic solution needs to have trust, uncertainty, and entropy. They've got to be quantum secure, and that's only done through quantum mechanics, the basis of Quantropy's IP, where we convert quantum physical states into a mathematical expression in linear algebra. And from there, we're able to derive asymmetric encryption, our mask product, symmetric encryption, our key product, and strong random numbers and pseudo quantum random numbers through our secure product, all delivered in a, to the enterprise and the organization and the agency through our key space platform. Key space is commercially available as a hybrid SaaS platform. It starts with Keyspace Cloud, a multi-tenant service managed by Quantropy, where all of our customers are able to provision their accounts and their devices and set up their entropy. Then Keyspace Enterprise, which is installed on-premise at our customers. There they receive the entropy from Quantropy, convert it into private quantum key material, and they're provisioned end devices and users and manage their entire system. And then last but not least, the Keyspace SDK, where our customers are able to embed, mask, keep, and secure into applications, devices, end user applications, whatever, wherever they need the three capabilities of complete and true quantum security. Now through Keyspace SDK, they can embed it into their applications and systems. So Quantropy in our Keyspace platform defends against today's threats and to tomorrow's quantum-based attacks. We can protect both data at rest and data in motion. We eliminate the threat of steal now and crack later as more quantum computing comes online. We're readily and easily deployable over your existing networks and system with minimal investment in new technology or infrastructure. And ultimately, we perform at the ultra high speeds and low latency and memory and compute that you would expect in today's modern digital world. All in all, Quantropy delivers true quantum security today and forever. You know, here at Quantropy, we're really excited to preserve truth and trust. We're excited about where the future holds. 
And we as well, we see here to Quantropy, bring it on. With that, I'm Mike Redding, Chief Technology Officer at Quantropy, and I thank you for your time. And of course, we're very happy to answer questions.